Oh great, 1%, low battery. What are we gonna do? I got it. Can I charge this with this? Let's find out. So here's the plan. We're gonna need a big wheel. Kind of like those ones you'd find at a pet store for a hamster, except it's gonna be way bigger than that. Then we're gonna take a generator and slap it on the end of it so that when a squirrel comes by and runs on the wheel, it's gonna spin the generator to send electricity to hopefully charge up my phone. Well, that's the plan. There's no way anything's gonna go wrong. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we're gonna need is the big wheel. And I decided to use this, an aluminum cake tin. And this should be more than big enough for squirrels to run around on the inside. We're also gonna need a way to turn that rotation into electricity. That's where this comes in. I got myself a stepper motor and we're gonna use it to charge up this small little battery pack. So let's build something to hold it all. So I got a couple pieces of wood and I attached them together with some screws. Then I took the motor mount and I attached that to the top. Wheel time. I marked perfectly in the center. I took a little drill bit and I drilled it out. I took some washers, a nut and a bolt and I went ahead and placed them through it and I tightened it down as tight as I could and this is gonna be able to attach it to the motor. And speaking of motor, it's time to figure out how to wire this thing up. And since this is a stepper motor, I have to use two of these. They're small little rectifiers. So I go ahead and solder them onto both of the outputs on the stepper motor. I grabbed a couple small capacitors and I put one on the output. And we're also gonna need this, a small little transistor. And all it's gonna do is regulate the voltage to five volts. And the last step is just to attach the little USB-C connector so that we can actually plug it in and charge our little battery from the motor. With our new plug on the output, I plugged it into the battery, and now when I spin up the motor, it starts to charge it right away. It's time to attach it to the stand. I put in a couple machine screws and I tighten them down with the nuts. Since this is going to be living outside for quite a while, it's going to need a little rain cover. So I took a Tupperware container, I marked a little circle on the front, and I took a small knife and I just cut out an opening so that when I place it on top of it, it's going to protect it from the rain, but you can still spin the motor. Let's put the wheel on. I took the extruding bolt and I put it in the little collar and I tightened it down with an Allen key to really secure it in place. And now we have the wheel secured to the motor and ready for action. I wanted to see how easily it spins. So I just ended up using this mouse right here cause it's lightweight and definitely lighter than a squirrel. And it actually spun around a lot freer than I thought. I plugged in the battery just to make sure it's still working. And now when I spin the wheel, it starts to charge up the battery. One thing I did notice is I have to spin the wheel pretty quickly, which I'm not super thrilled about, so I decided to change the circuit a little bit. I ended up resoldering everything together in series, just so it doubles the voltage, so that means it should start charging the battery at a lot slower speeds. And it totally works. I spin it about half the speed I did before, and it starts charging up the battery much better. I then noticed on the back of it, there's like this colorful mess of wires and I'm worried that the squirrels are going to think they're like flavored licorice and I just wanted to make sure that they didn't chew on it or mess with it. So I ended up getting this little conduit and I put the wires inside of it and I screwed it on the back and it looks really nice and no way the squirrels are going to mess with it now. I took my portable battery and made sure it had no charge left inside of it and I put it inside of a weatherproof box with all the other electronics. I closed the lid on top of it and this is just to make sure that no squirrels or water gets inside of it while this experiment's going. It was time to give this thing a name. The Generator. No, scratch that. The Squirrelerator. I added on a tongue sticking out the front of it and all that this is going to do is help hold on the little security camera because we're going to have ourselves a little camera watching whatever happens to the wheel. And you can see we can watch it live on our phone and it will also record whenever there's motion. Pretty sweet. And just like that, it was time to try it out. But first we needed to add a little bit of squirrel motivation. I scattered them all around the wheel and the base just to get them interested and excited. And now it's time to wait and see what happens. The first thing that came to visit the wheel was somebody's random cat. I have no idea whose it is. I've definitely seen it around sometimes and it just kind of disappeared off into the middle of the forest. Right around when it started to get dark, you could see a small little robin showed up on camera. If we actually slow down that footage, we can see it actually catches a bug and eats it right on frame, which is pretty cool. And then in the middle of the night, we had a visit from a spider who wanted to crawl in everybody's face, which is honestly pretty creepy looking at it through a camera lens. And then for like three days, nothing until boom, a rabbit. 
It's the first thing to take any of the motivation. And to be honest, if we got this to run on the wheel, we'd probably charge up our battery in like half the time it would take a squirrel, because these rabbits are just crazy fast running around everywhere. Not even five minutes after the bunny left, we had our first visit from a squirrel. It's a cute little black squirrel. It just grabs one of the nuts, not really sure what to make of the wheel, then also decided to say hi to everybody at home. After it ate the last bit of motivation, it put one of its foot on the wheel, which is a huge step, and hopefully those squirrels are going to get more comfortable and want to run on it soon. Oh, hello again. A few minutes later, and a little late to the party, we have this newcomer to the field, and that is this tiny little chipmunk right here. He's a cute little guy, he instantly says hi to everybody at home. I'm sure he can smell some of the remnants of the old food, but he can't seem to find any, so he just jumps off into the forest. So with all the food gone, it was time to make a new motivator. I found this, I've never really seen it before, but apparently you put a corn cob in it and then you hang it and squirrels and stuff will eat it. And I also got this random garden steak. So what I did was I removed the bottom of the corn feeder, I just want a little piece of it, and I tacked it together on the little garden steak. So now we have a tiny little basket on a stick. So it was time to head outside and install it into the ground. I just kind of shoved it in the ground and I began to fill it up with a bunch of walnuts because I was hoping the little sharp edges and ridges are going to catch in the basket. And I'm hoping this is going to motivate the squirrels to try to reach it while also running on the wheel. So let's let it sit and see what happens. The chipmunk must have been watching me because he was the first on the scene checking out what was going on. And to my surprise, the little guy actually put his whole body on the wheel. We might be looking for some chipmunk power. And after all the nuts were gone, he decided it was time to go for the motivator. And he actually moved the wheel a little bit. So far, the chipmunk is in the lead and he really wants the motivator nuts. But he can't seem to figure out how to get it and he doesn't want to keep running on the wheel. Again, in the middle of the night, we had a visit from our spider friend to make us feel a little bit uncomfortable. And then first in the morning, little Chip was on the scene. And he really wanted those walnuts, trying everything he can to get them. And then all of a sudden, the little guy jumped and he just hung on the basket and knocked them out. The little guy outsmarted me, just jumping like a crazy little rascal, just cleaning me out of all the walnuts. It looks like I'm going to have to have a new idea and way to motivate these creatures. But I mean, look at him. He is just so cute trying to shove that in his mouth. So I was back to the drawing board and what I came up with was some fruit cups. And I'm going to be using them and not for the fruit. And I also got another long garden steak. So I ate all the fruit out of them and then I took a knife and I poked some holes in the bottom and then I filled them up with a bunch of walnuts and almonds. Then I took some crazy glue and I glued the two halves together. So it's a small little container full of nuts that you can smell through. And then I went ahead and I glued it with some epoxy onto the garden steak. Then I went outside and I took out the old motivator and put in the motivator 2.0. And I'm hoping this is going to get them to jump at it and try to get it, but they can't actually take the bait out of it. And there's only one way to find out if it works. The first thing on the scene was the little rabbit, just munching on some of the nuts I set around, not really interested in the wheel at all, and then it jumps off. And of course, it isn't a night unless Mr. Spider crawls all over our face. And in the morning, little Chip is back at it again, first on the scene to explore what's new with the wheel today, standing on it, not afraid of it, munching on some nuts, and then trying to check out the new Motivator 2.0. He then decides it's time to give everybody a little hug. A few minutes later, we had a visit from a squirrel again. With all of the nuts gone except the ones in the motivator, there was only one thing he was interested in. He definitely knows there's food and nuts inside of it, but he can't figure out how to get inside of it. And honestly, I don't want him to. I just want him to start running on the wheel. But honestly, I think he got a little bit frustrated and then just decided that was enough. A little while later, we had a visit again from the tiny little rabbit, and it actually put its front paws on the wheel this time. It's definitely becoming more comfortable, and it actually spanned the wheel just a little bit. It didn't put its back legs on it yet, but it's definitely becoming more comfortable, and I'm still very hopeful that we'll be able to generate some power with at least some of these creatures from the forest. For the next couple days, there wasn't that much interest in the Motivator 2.0, so it's time to bust out the secret weapon, peanut butter. I removed the old motivator, I took a massive scoop of peanut butter, I took a stick I found on the ground, and I began to spread it in a couple places around the perimeter of the circle. I'm hoping this is going to get them more comfortable with the wheel and eat some of the piles and I have to walk and use the wheel to reach the others. Well, that's the hope anyway. So let's see what happens. Shortly after setting it up, our first visitor was a squirrel definitely smelling the peanut butter in the air and it found the one piece of peanut butter that I dropped on a leaf and it just sat there and munched it all the way down. The squirrel was having a field day, 
eating a pile, spinning the wheel to its front legs, and eating another pile. Not exactly what I wanted, but at least it was getting more comfortable with the wheel. A little while later, the little chipmunk came back to see what was up with the wheel today. Definitely interested, it put its whole body on the wheel, took a few steps, and I think it kind of freaked him out a little bit because he disappeared for a little while. But soon he was back and he was sitting on the wheel, munching on the piles of peanut butter, and it was perfectly going to plan. So next, when he wants the other pile, he's going to have to walk a little bit on the wheel. So far, he's the one who's walked the most, but it seems the wheel freaks him out a little bit still. Later that night, we had a new visitor at the wheel, and that is a tiny little field mouse who was just zooming and zipping around. I definitely think he could smell the peanut butter, but I don't think he found out where it was because he was jumping all over everything, just checking out every corner on top of the battery box, but he didn't go on top of the wheel, and then he just disappeared into the night. In the morning, the squirrels were back, grabbing some peanut butter, spinning the wheel to front paws, pretty much using the thing as like a lazy Susan. I mean, there was definitely multiple times in multiple different squirrels standing with three legs on the wheel, but not getting the last one on it. I am so hoping that the squirrels will eventually start to run on it. Later in the afternoon, we had a new visitor, a massive old groundhog, who was definitely smelling the excess peanut butter around the air, but didn't seem to care much about the wheel and decided it wasn't worth his time. Later, we had another little visit from the chipmunk. He's putting his whole body on the wheel. He's taking steps. He's walking forward. He's definitely putting some rotation on the wheel, which is a wonderful thing. A few more squirrels came to visit using the front paws to get the remainder of the peanut butter. Later that night, we had a newcomer come to the wheel, and that is a little raccoon who just munched on some of the peanut butter. The tiny little field mouse stopped by again, and he's definitely too small to make the wheel spin, which is a bit of a bummer because I feel like he would like to run on it as well. And then this thing. A possum, a big old possum who came by and was actually licking so ferociously he was spinning the wheel. And the crazy thing is we might have generated a little bit of power from just him licking, which is silly. And then there was a whole bunch of rain for the next few days, so not a lot happened. After the storms passed, the squirrels were back at it, checking out what was going on with the wheel. They actually started putting their full body on it and taking some steps on it as well. They're definitely used to the wheel and I think it's pretty cute when they sit on it and rock back and forth. To be honest, they just love the wheel, and it's probably because of all the free peanut butter they're getting. The possum came back that night to spin the wheel a bit with his tongue. Then the mouse came back, the raccoon came back, and we had a cardinal pop by in the morning. It felt like pretty much everything in the forest knew that this wheel existed, as so many things came by just to check it out every day. And since they all knew it was there, there was definitely the occasional little tussle where you just see all the squirrels sort of chasing after each other. I mean, even Little Chip wanted to get on the action. There's definitely time where the chipmunk, the black squirrel, and the brown squirrel were all chasing each other, trying to claim the wheel. What a bunch of goofs. So the wheel's been placed out in the forest for around three weeks now. There's been multiple squirrels and different animals that keep coming by it, stepping on it, moving it, walking on a little bit, but nothing's really been like full up running on it. So I'm not really sure how much charge we're going to generate over these three weeks, but I will say the squirrels have been very consistent, checking out the wheel at least every day just to see if there's anything new on it, mostly for food. But they do put some steps on it and walk on it. So I really have no idea what to expect when I check out the charge state of the battery. But there's really only one way to find out. And you know what they say. You can bring a horse to water, but you can't make it run on a giant cake pan in the forest. Let's check out the battery. It's pretty dirty. Looks like the rain cover held up well. Alright, let's see what it looks like on the inside. Hey, it's like perfectly fine in there. All right, we got the battery. Let's go charge our phone. Hey, well, it's uh, totally charging. At least it has some amount of charge on it. It's blinking, so it is pretty low but it is charging. I'm currently at 83% right now. We'll see how high it goes. Cool. Well, about five minutes later, it looks like our battery pack is dead again. It's just uh, blinking when I touch it and it's not charging anymore. And it looks like we managed to get a whopping 2% charge. We went up from 83% to 85%. Well, we did it. We managed to charge our phone from squirrel power, bunny power, some chipmunk power, maybe a touch of raccoon power and some possum tongue power. We managed to get a whopping 2% difference from 83% to 85% before the battery went dead. I'm happy that we even had some percent charge because 
you can make the wheel as fun and as uh, much food and you can make it as interesting as you can for the animals but at the end of the day it's them who decide if they want to spin it or not and I'm just happy that they felt comfortable enough to walk on it spin it and at least give me a little bit of charge because we ended up charging our phone uh, two whole percent which to me is an amazing thing anyways I hope you enjoyed this video hopefully you had fun hopefully you uh, learned something or just had fun on the journey with me and I want to say thanks for stopping by and I'll catch you all in the next one